And uh, now, Mr. Carney, you're now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Chairman Fleming, Ranking Member Huffman, uh, Vice Chairman Gosar, other members who may be watching uh, on the TV. I want to thank you for the opportunity to have this hearing <coughs> on H.R. 1772. I'd also like to thank my good friend Colin O'Mara from the Wildlife Federation and Wendy Weber, Regional Director of U.S. Fish and Wildlife, who are going to be on the second paddle. Two weeks ago, I went fly fishing along the Brandywine River with an old friend. The Brandywine runs through northern Delaware, right through the city of Wilmington, a couple blocks from my house. I have years of memories playing along the Brandywine with my two sons, and it was along the banks of this river that the DuPont Company, world-renowned DuPont Company, started uh, gunpowder mills over 200 years ago. The Brandywine River is not unlike creeks and rivers you probably find in your home states. For instance, it's not that different from the Huron River in Congresswoman Dingle's district or the Hoskins Creek in Mr. Whitman's. But there's one key difference, and that's what brings me here today. Most of the waterways in my district are located inside the Delaware River Basin. For years, other watersheds across the country have benefited from dedicated funding sources that have provided hundreds of millions of dollars to protection and restoration efforts. The Delaware River Basin, on the other hand, one of the nation's most important watersheds, has no dedicated funding source and only receives a small fraction of nat national conservation and restoration funding. While my state is lucky enough to serve as the basin's namesake, the Delaware River Basin stretches far beyond the boundaries of the tiny state of Delaware. It's comprised of water, waterways through the state of Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. More than 16 million people rely on the Delaware River Basin for their drinking water, including residents of New York City and Philadelphia. In fact, the Delaware River Basin is the only watershed in the United States that serves two of our five largest cities. The basin contributes approximately $25 billion in annual economic activity to the region, and that doesn't count the vital recreational role of these waterways to the surrounding communities. <clears throat> I'm here today to talk about the importance of ensuring the Delaware River Basin's continued conservation and restoration. H.R. 1772, which is before you, addresses this important objective. The Delaware River Basin Conservation Act would create a restoration program within the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. We'll hear from Wendy Weber later. This program would develop a coordinated approach to ensure that one of our most important watersheds remains viable. Additionally, this program provides a competitive grant and assistance program to support work done by state and local governments, nonprofit organizations, and universities. I also want to be clear about what this bill does not do. It does not create a funding mechanism for the Delaware River Basin Commission, which I think is a misunderstanding that some have. That is a completely separate agency with a very different mandate. Second, it does not tie the hands of Fish and Wildlife in terms of how the grant program is administered. As you may know, the Delaware River Basin Conservation Act has been introduced every Congress in 2010. My predecessor, Mike Castle, a Republican, was the first to introduce it then. And the bill has just gotten better every year that we've introduced it. It's especially important for me to point out that this bill is non-regulatory in nature. I know that's something that creates some concern among a number of my colleagues, including some of the sponsors of the bill. This is a voluntary program. We've also made changes to leverage even greater non-federal matches for the program. We're making sure we're getting the best bang for the buck. The most that the federal Fish and Wildlife could put into any project is 50%. With these changes, we've been able to drum up more support than ever before. The bill is strongly bipartisan. We have nine Republicans and eight Democrats as co-sponsors, mostly members whose districts are in the basin. And it has a wide array of support from stakeholders, including groups like Ducks Unlimited, an important partner, the National Wildlife Federation, we'll hear from Colin O'Mara, and key industry members such as the DuPont Company, whose history is so important in this basin. This strategic multi-stakeholder approach will improve fish and wildlife habitats, bolster recreational opportunities, which are so important to all the residents, improve water quality, re revitalize waterfronts, and reduce flood damage, which is a big concern, particularly, frankly, in some of the Republican districts along the Delaware River, all of which support the regional economy. 
This program is crucial to ensuring the Delaware River Basin can, to con can continue to serve the communities that depend on it. I want to thank the Chairman, Ranking Member, Vice Chairman, again for the opportunity to talk about this important bill today.